Alejandro Rojas, you will be the master of ceremonies again this year for the International UFO Congress event coming up in a couple of days. Uh, tell me this, do you get a sense that there is a bigger audience for this now as opposed to say five years ago? It seems like the public should really be engaged given all the news coverage and action in Congress. I think that they're hesitant. I think the public is interested. And I, I think I could say that because we're seeing uh, mainstream news stories are getting tons of clicks. You know, we're seeing a, a lot more of that going on. And the feedback is that everybody's looking at those articles. Uh, I think that we're seeing Netflix documentaries doing a lot better. I mean, I was shocked that one of the documentaries, you know, when we do these conferences, a lot of times we're asked to go into a room, do an interview, and you don't think much of it. But one of these documentaries was like number four on Netflix just a few weeks ago. And I've got all these people telling me, I'm seeing you on TV, I'm seeing you on TV. So it's definitely reaching a lot of people, all my neighbors, all my coworkers, uh, you know, meant talking about that. So I think people are watching stuff online, kind of in a controlled environment where nobody needs to know that they're starting to get interested in this. So I think people are starting to dip their toes out. We're not, I, I haven't seen any of the conferences really getting any major increase in attendees. But then again, we've had COVID going on for the last couple of years. So I think that's definitely a big factor. But uh, so I think that people are dipping their toes in, but they're doing it from the comfort of their homes in secret. You know, people are uh, impatient, of course. Those who are new to the topic think it's moving too slowly. Whereas those of us like you have been around a long time are astonished at how fast it's changed how much news there has been over the last couple of years. Uh, the UAP task force, of course, that's a gigantic story. It's been covered by all kinds of major media. You know, they put out a report that many found disappointing. I did not see it that way. I saw it as a major shift from what the Department of Defense has always said publicly about this. Where do you think that's going? Where, uh, the UAP task force hopefully will have a permanent home somewhere. Where do you think that's going? Yeah, that's what I, I'm with you. I think all of this movement is extremely excited. Those who are looking for answers that are way down in the rabbit hole, the rabbit hole has no end. So there could be some astonishing revelation. And I don't think people would still be satisfied because it'd be like, you know, well, what about the Arcturians? What about the Zeta Reticulans? And, and so I don't think there's any satisfying those type of people who really want the deep info. But like you're saying, right now is extremely exciting in that we have this UAP task force um, mostly created to you know deal with this report that the Senate uh, Intelligence Committee asked for. They've completed that, but luckily they're not gone. You know, uh, Harry Reid just did an interview recently where he was like, I hope this isn't a one and done. They release this this report and that's it. And it doesn't look like that is the case. I mean, they were tasked with putting together uh, a, a system of collecting and, and centralizing this information to analyze it. And it looks like that's what they're doing. And an exciting part to that is that it looks like they're going to NASA, they're going to Space Command, they're going to the Air Force. Although uh, I think it was Brian Bender did an interview with uh, someone with the Air Force and they said, they haven't asked us to do this. If they do ask us to do it, we'll do it. But he's saying, I don't see it as a major threat. So I'm not sure it's, it's something that we need to look into. Uh, but then we have, you know, um, Bill Nelson, the head of NASA, speaking very positively. He just had a secret briefing last week. He mentioned to CNN he had the briefing three years ago. He's very open to looking into this. He does see it as a scientific question. And he went so far to say, you know, I think it's a, it, there's aliens out there. There are civilizations out there. We're looking for them. We haven't found them yet, but I think they're out there. I think that's really exciting when you have someone at that level, uh, especially a, an organization like NASA that is very PR savvy and cognizant. Um, you know, they're, they're, I think they're more of a PR monster than, than anything. I mean, that, that's a, a major concern for them. And when he's able to, in a conversation, when he's asked about UFOs, to go so far as to say, to bring up aliens and say he believes they're out there, that's huge. So I think it's really exciting to see where this all leads to. And, and like you, you know, I, I to me, this is all neck breaking speed. I mean, to go from 
just a few years ago, the revelation that this Pentagon program happened, having the Pentagon fight against it, even you know put out wrong information about Luis Elizondo, who came out about all of this, then the Navy revealing we do take this seriously, moving to the Senate, um, asking for this information, and now some new official structure being put together in a much more serious manner than I think even Project Blue Book was put together. Uh, I think it's all very exciting. You know, the your colleague, your friend and colleague, Brian Bender, did write about the, the UAP task force and the possibility of it ending up at Space Force, and that maybe there's some pushback from Space Force and that maybe not everyone is on board with that. My prediction is that is where it's going to go. Um, and I, you know, I saw these promo reels, these videos, recruitment videos that Space Force put out a couple of days ago. It looks like uh, the trailer for a sci-fi movie. Just the visuals of it seems like a great fit for uh, where it could land. Do you expect uh, an announcement about that? Or is that where you would hope that it goes? I don't know. I know there's a lot of talk around that. And it seems like maybe that's where it will end up. I'm not as excited about that just because I mean, the Space Force is an evolution of Air Force Space Command. Air Force Space Command, very secretive, but they're mostly dealing with satellites, with space um, threats, protecting our assets in space. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't realize that, you know, satellite navigation, you know, all comes from that. It's a free service that we offer the world, the United States. And so they've got a lot uh, on their plate that has nothing to do with kind of aliens and everything. When Space Force got created, there was kind of this PR kind of thing. And, and they kind of played into people making fun of this idea of Space Force and chasing aliens and going to fight aliens and this sort of thing. And so Space Force seems to be really kind of playing on that, using this, this PR imagery to um, bring excitement around what they're doing. And it, it, well, at least bringing excitement about the Space Force, not necessarily what they actually do in the Space Force. So that's where I'm not sure if it's a great fit. Um, the way that the UAP task force has looked at this is a potential threat that these are technologies, uh, these are our vehicles that are impeding on, on airspace that's secure. What are they? That's a danger. We can't have unknown technology, you know, flying willy nilly over our, our aircraft carriers and, you know, bothering our jet aircraft and everything. So uh, that's not really the Space Force's wheelhouse. That's really, I would imagine, and that's why Air Force was the first task with this, uh, perhaps in the Air Force wheelhouse. I feel more comfortable with the Navy, at least the Navy, you know, um, the threat issue is, is more of their concern. Um, and why do I say threat? A lot of people get upset with that idea of a threat. And I guess because it's an unknown, it's investigating an unknown, which is really important. And maybe even twofold, you have a, the uh, investigation of the unknown potential threat, along with an agency like NASA, that's science-based, doing a scientific research on what is this mystery. They're, they have SETI, they have the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, you know, uh, type of projects that they're doing. They are searching for life out there. You know, NASA would be a good fit as well. So I'm a little hesitant with Space Force. Um, yeah, I, I, where this I, I don't have a favorite either way. Uh, I would hate to see it go to the Air Force, given the Air Force's track record. And, True. you know, with all these UFO revelations for the past three and a half years, Air Force has been pretty silent. You know, we saw from the UAP task force report that was issued that the Air Force had somewhat reluctantly agreed, all right, we're going to play ball. We're going to establish some listening posts in places where there's been a lot of activity. That's really the first indication we've had that they're uh, willing to cooperate whatsoever. You know, they, I saw some of Brian Bender's interview with the, is it the Secretary of the Air Force, the new Air Force chief who, uh, who was sort of noncommittal about the whole thing. Yeah, well, we'll investigate threats. Uh, but didn't really wasn't really forthcoming with a lot of info. What was your take on that? I agree with you 100%. It was more along the lines of if they saddle us with this, then we'll do it, <laughs> but we don't want to, which has been their attitude all along. You know, uh, I think we have one of the few stories that was written by uh, my colleague An Antonio Huneas about how when Carter came into office and he actually asked NASA, will you look into UFOs? 
And NASA had consulted with the Air Force and they said, don't do it. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's not your, and they're kind of right in that it is a lose-lose situation. I think we saw this with the Air Force comments uh, even this week. You know, everybody's critical of every different angle that it could be taken that, you know, the people who are skeptical are thinking you're just, you know, ruining the Air Force's reputation. The people who are really into this are like, you're lying, you know, aliens are here. So there's kind of no winning. And that is kind of a tough situation. But yeah, the Air Force has not been forthcoming. They've been very secretive, even during this whole thing, even in the beginning, when the Navy admitted that they do take UAP seriously and they're looking into it, they invoked the Air Force's name. I think it was kind of a jab. I don't think it was necessarily. Uh, and they said, you know, we, along with the Air Force, take this very seriously, yet we had crickets from the Air Force. I think the only real comment we had along the lines was uh, when there was a sighting that people were thinking could have been a drone and the Air Force piped up and said, no, that was definitely not a, a drone. Um, which was kind of interesting because they were supporting the idea that this was an unknown object. So, but otherwise we haven't heard much until now and, and our, their attitude isn't too surprising because it was their attitude during Blue Book that we're gonna, we're saddled with this. We're gonna try to appease the public, but we're really not into this. Um, and it doesn't necessarily mean, I think a lot of us know that this was more of a public facing thing um, that they did take, you know, these sort of situations seriously but those were, you know, tasked or, or investigated by the people who are in charge of looking at national security issues. Uh, talk a bit about the content coming at the International UFO Congress. A lot of great speakers. Lou Elizondo, whom you mentioned, is one of them. You know, Lou, I give him great uh, respect because of all the shots he has taken since entering this field. And I'm sure there's times when he's thought to himself, why did I do this? Can I, can I go back and, and undo it because of you know, the allegations that he never worked for ATIP, that ATIP had nothing to do with UFOs over and over again, uh, attacking his credibility, his integrity. Yet here he is plugging away. What what would you expect to hear from him at the Congress? What might he address? And, and do you appreciate that he's sticking with it? I extremely appreciate that he's sticking with it because, you know, um, I think we were one of the first once the uh, 2017 article came out, even though we're friendly with Tom DeLong and we worked closely with him at Open Minds, he, you know, they were still really stashed with Lou. They would not let us get access. So I had to kind of go around and, and find his contact information to start to talk to him. And then, you know, with his help, uh, get his permission to, uh, to have To The Stars do an interview with Lou that we could share at the, the Congress uh, a few years ago. And that was really difficult. And at that time, as you all well know, people like you and I or Brian Bender who were covering this just straight, we're just you know, looking at the information, sharing the information. We're taking a lot of heat from even some of the old school kind of UFO researchers saying, why are you believing this guy? He's obviously a liar. You guys are buying his his story hook, line, and sinker. And I, and I think, you know, we felt we're not telling his story. We're telling the big picture, the whole story. He's not our only source of information. Um, and, and, you know, I was, and I'm sure you were, and, and I know others uh, were just as skeptical of him as anybody else. But, you know, what, what, what he was telling us fit what other supporting uh, information was coming to all of us. And I think over the years, we've seen he was right. What a lot of people don't know is a lot of this, you know, um, questioning of his background and personality or, or, you know, and personality, and especially coming from the Pentagon itself, had a real toll on him. It was really distressing. It was difficult. He thought he was going to come out and be a champion for the UFO field, yet the UFO field was like, hey, who are you? We don't want nothing to do with it. You're a big jerk. And really cruel, kind of like Bob Bigelow experienced, I think. Um, and so I think to his credit, he's really stayed positive. He's really stayed focused on his goal. And here we are years later where, you know, he has really been um, justified and or at least, you know, everybody knows that he has been accurate throughout the years and uh, and that uh, he is the real deal. And I think that now everyone has a much more positive uh, at outlook towards Lou. Um, he's reached out to even his, some of his biggest detractors to do interviews and try to come to the, some common ground. So I think, and what's great is what Lou is going to talk about is not 
all of this about how, oh, woe is me. Look at how terrible this was for me. No, Luke's going to be like, hey, this is exciting. There's more stuff to look at. There's more that's going to come out. There's more that we need to do. He's, he's always forward looking. And I think that's what's exciting about whenever Lou Elizondo does a talk is that he talks to you about where we can go from here and some of the exciting things that are over the horizon that we can do to get more information out about this topic. You know, the UFO world is a, it's dysfunctional at best. That's a polite way to put it. Uh, everybody wants the truth so long as it's their truth. So somebody who like Lou Elizondo comes in and sucks all the air out of the room. I mean, you know, the stories that he's told and hands-on experience, people don't like that. Um, you know, so it, it kind of comes with the territory. I think Avi Loeb, who's a, another a speaker at the Congress, has probably learned that to some degree. You know, he comes out earlier this year. Amazing that he takes a, as deep a dive into the, into the UFO pool as he's done, because it starts fairly modest. I, I don't know if this is a modest story, but the, the the object that he had identified as an intergalactic visitor that made a lot of news. But he's now gone gone full into it. He's he's divid, dived into the deep end of the pool, uh, setting up an organization to look for extraterrestrial life. I mean, he's taking no prisoners, right? Yeah, that's what's been really exciting. He's kind of gone the way of Lou Elizondo a bit in that, you know, this Oumuamua object came out. It was exciting enough that this first interstellar object that came through our solar system, there was some mysterious properties to it. It was exciting enough that the first scientific paper that came out actually included the possibility, maybe this is alien technology. And I think that's really important that we're seeing more and more of that with uh, astronomical mysteries out there, phenomena that are unexplained that they always put in there, maybe it's aliens, you know, not saying for sure it is, but at least being open to the idea because maybe it is. Abby Lowe came forward, you know, towards the end of kind of all of all of this when really kind of that original news cycle was over almost. And he came out saying, I think it is alien. I think this is a probe that the, I can't find out any other explanation given the facts of, of what we know about this object. Of course, that was highly controversial. I think people were like, yeah, he's just saying that maybe that's what it is. But no, he came on very strong. This is what I think it might be. I think at the beginning of his news cycle, uh, you know, he was still hesitant about the UFO thing. Uh, I know that when I was seeking interviews and others, he was still a little hesitant with, with attaching UFOs to what he was talking about. But fortunately, he came more and more comfortable with it. By the time I talked to him, kind of after that big news cycle was dying down, he was very open, which was exciting. And he stayed and remained open to looking at the more mysterious type of uh, aspects to all of this, because I think he's seeing that, you know what, there was a blind spot. You know, the things that he's saying are very similar to things like Dr. Alan Hynek said decades ago and wrote in his books, what Jacques Vallée has said, what Peter Sturck, some of these other scientists who have gotten into this field, you know, have admitted we had this blind spot. It couldn't be, so we thought, why look into it? Because it just is impossible without looking at the facts and letting the facts stand on their own. I think now a lot of scientists are more open to this idea of letting the facts stand on their own. And, and they're even coming up with their own safe terminology, kind of like UAP is a safe word for UFO. They're using this term techno signatures. Um, and that's a big deal. And it sounds mundane. It doesn't, I think, make headlines. You don't see it in headlines. And, and that's purposeful. Scientists are not PR. They don't like the getting in the headlines. But what are techno signatures? Ancient alien technology. They're looking at artifacts that aliens have left either on other planets or here on our planet. And this is actually something that is now NASA's considering it. Um, SETI had talks about this. Techno signatures are a big deal. Could there be evidence, even on this planet, of ancient alien visitation? And they're taking that seriously and looking into it. And yeah, Avi Loeb is now becoming kind of a forefront of this, putting together a project in Harvard. And that's what he's going to be talking about at the conference, which I think is extremely exciting. This guy was not just a Harvard astronomer. He was a head of the department over there. And he's going to be sharing with us and speaking in terms. Um, and this is what I think is really exciting about this time 
as well. I mean, for me as a journalist, this is what I was dreaming about. When I was writing articles, it was to share credible information to show, hey, there is credible stuff here. This is a real phenomena. This is a real mystery that needs to be looked into. And dream about the day when a person like Avi Lowe will be up there to discuss this topic because educated people like him, people who um, have you know, been embedded in the astronomy field, um, they look at this and think about all of this very differently in a scientific way. But when they analyze and compute, you know, the stuff that we've been looking at, the way they look at it and share is to me extraordinary. The possible theories about the science, how this all can be done is, you know, just the type of stuff that we haven't heard before, which is extremely fascinating. And what's great is that it really excites his colleagues, other people in the scientific community to then pick up the gauntlet, whether they're skeptical or not, to see if there's something here. So yeah, yeah it's, it's a, amazing. It's a whole different ball game from just a couple of years ago. And the International UFO Congress has always been at the forefront of exploring uh, the most current stories. I know you got uh, Brian Bender is going to interview the former governor, Fife Symington, uh, live, I think, uh, uh, at, during the, the event. And uh, Symington sort of been all over the, the map on, on the issue. He was he distorted it and sort of covered it up. Then he came clean. He's gone back and forth since then. So looking forward to that. Uh, ben Hansen, uh, Lee Spiegel, um, you got a, a great lineup, and uh, I know I'm going to be tuning in and checking it out, and I hope our audience does too. Yeah, I'm very excited about the lineup. It's great. Uh, Karen puts it together. She is awesome. Everybody thinks it's me, and they contact me, and I tell them, no, that you got to <laughs> talk to the boss, and uh, she's done an amazing job, and she also makes sure that the, uh, the, the areas that aren't being featured by the media that the public is interested in, or at, the, at least the UFO community interested in, is also represented. So she does experiencers. have- Experiencers. Exactly, right? people yeah. who research experiencers, or maybe even credible people who have filled, they have their own experiences. She's put together a great group of people like that who will also be speaking. Alejandro, great. We're gonna to talk to your better half here in a little bit, and uh, uh, good luck with your conference, and I'll be tuning in. Thank you very much. Thanks. Great to talk to you.